What is going on everyone, Commodore Elias here today, bringing to my review slash discussion of One Piece manga chapter 939, titled An Old Hirose Knows the Way. Now, with this week's chapter of One Piece, there was quite a lot of information to kind of dive into, you know, stuff that we finally got answers to questions we were kind of wondering about, information from, you know, back in the day of One Piece that's starting to come into play now, and stuff that we can kind of ponder about, you know, later on chapters. So, Without further ado, let's get into the actual chapter itself because we started off the chapter with the whole Zoro finding out about the big plot twist in regards to Komurasaki being Iori. Crazy, right? But for those of you guys who didn't understand the sarcasm in the live reaction, I've been known that Komurasaki was Iori ever since we saw Komurasaki for the first time. Then we got the segue to Tama and like Momonosuke's conversation about Iori. It's like, come on. If y'all didn't get the sarcasm, then you know what? You disappoint me. But anyways aside from that we get to see the whole thing with regards to you know how Hiori had escaped uh, from her palace you know from Odin Castle after you know the like, beast pirates that came in tried to burn the whole place down she was saved basically by Kawamatsu the Kappa who again was now revealed to be the person that we saw uh, that was like shrouded in mystery with like you know the hats and the clothes was kind of hard to see that in fact was Kawamatsu the Kappa pretty much had rescued her you know they dug, he dug his way through like the uh, for a water channel to pretty much go and escape uh, out of the castle and it also kind of makes me wonder a little bit in regards to what transpired afterwards with Lady Toki's fruit because as we know we, there was nothing stated whatsoever you know during like Hiori's talk and everything in regards to you know what had happened afterwards so it kind of makes me think that most likely two scenarios kind of come into play either for one which is the most obvious one is that Lady Toki had died and her fruit has circulated somewhere else maybe it's inside of a banana maybe inside of an orange a pear I don't know with polka dots or a little time thing next to it Basically, the fruit's back in circulation. Or number two, and this is a reach in a sense, but think back to when Kawamatsu was, you know, taking care of the like, Kiori, just providing her food and stuff so that way she wouldn't go hungry. Is that what if by accident, one of the fruits or whatever it is that she ate basically had, you know, the fruit, like the devil fruit was inside of one of the fruits that was there that Kawamatsu had fed to Hiori and Hiori actually doesn't know that she has possession of the time time fruit. So... I mean, that's just a possibility I'm just throwing in there, but the most likely thing is that Toki had died and then, you know, the fruit's back in circulation. You know, we get to see the conversation afterwards, you know, going to more of like, you know, how Kamatsu was taking care of her. Uh, he pretty much take care, took care of her basically from the age of six up until 13. So for at least like seven years, we get to see, you know, Kawamatsu was taking care of her for that time. And then eventually whatever transpired that led to Kawamatsu being in prison in Udon. And then eventually afterwards, Kyoshiro came in and took care of her, you know, transitioning from Hiyori afterwards to Komurasaki. And I do want to talk about more regarding that little time thing because I think Oda might have just told us exactly who Kyosho really is. But I'm going to leave you on that cliffhanger for another video for that. And uh, after that, we get to see, you know, exactly why they decided that, you know, Hiori was not going to be part of the whole time loop and jump into the future 20 years. Is that they wanted to pretty much preserve the bloodline for the Kuzuki family, uh, you know, just in case whatever the plans had gone wrong and they end up dying afterwards. At the very least, the Kuzuki bloodline can still live on through Hiori. Uh, in the present timeline. After that, we get the reveal of the nine red scabbards or the Akazaya nine, depending on the translation. We get to see exactly who the members are, of course. In fact, are Kinimon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kiku Joro, which I was kind of like weirded on, like that's that was her name, so but I'm still gonna call her Kiku regardless. Uh, Kiku, then we get Inurarashi, Nakamamushi, uh, then after that, it's Ashura Doji, Denjiro, and then after uh, Kawamatsu. So we get like the whole like Akazaya nine, which I felt that was fine. We didn't need to like, you know, have to ponder on like, you know, who this other mystery character is going to fill those slots afterwards. So the fact that we got the Akazaya 9 uh, pretty much out of the way was actually pretty good. And then afterwards we get to like more of the talk after where uh, Zoro kind of reveals that while the calling cards and stuff that, you know, he already brought up and stuff have been good to, you know, recruit some of the people that we need, you know, for the Alliance. Unfortunately, the location, the Habu port had pretty much been leaked to the opposition. So now... Uh, people are being pretty much being captured their location's been spotted so for sure if they'll say they try to you know rendezvous back to the habu port uh they basically can't do that because there's probably people from the beast pirates and then from orochi's men who are kind of waiting around to you know try and ambush them after so they're gonna have to do something else and i'm thinking that because big mom is pretty much on her way to udon with chopper with momonosuke with kiku with, with tom and stuff i feel like that would be a good portion to have like you know big mom be there cause a disruption you know they're gonna have to focus on her, you know, during her attack on Udon Prison, looking for the Oshiroku, which Queen, by coincidence, has. So it's like you have like a little battle that's going on. Luffy, Hogoro, Raizo, Kawamatsu, and all of them are gonna try and escape afterwards, and then they can probably rendezvous somewhere else. And I think the most likely situation might be going back to Amigasa Village or possibly somewhere within Curry that's kind of away from everything that's going on. 
So maybe that's probably the new location they're probably going to have to look for. Maybe wherever the sunny is uh, near the Curry Beach. So maybe that's probably the new location they're going to look for. Unless they're able to take all the heat off Habu Port and move it towards Uda instead. We get that. And then after they were kind of teasing towards, you know, Hiori saying that, you know, maybe she's going to wait to see her brother after the final battle. But I don't see that being the case because, again, Zoro, we know, is going to rendezvous back afterwards with the rest of the Alliance and Straw Hat Pirates. And uh, most likely she'll probably be on the sidelines. Maybe she ends up meeting Momonosuke at the end of Act 2 or maybe she just doesn't yet. They're kind of like, you know, in hiding and then she's kind of waiting on the sidelines for, you know, the eventual battle to kind of conclude and see him. I think that's going to be the case. After that, we switch over to this really nice double spread where we get to see the Risatsu Prison District or the Prisoner Showcase where we get to see basically all the prisoners uh, who are pretty much all the rebels that we got to see early on in Act 2 that Usopp was handing out the calling cards to and pretty much kind of denying everything that's going on. They're like, oh, like, you know, this has nothing to do with anything. It's just an old folk tale, you know, we're just playing around. It's nothing, nothing that serious. And Fukuro Kujo kind of states that it's kind of rubbish because apparently there's like a riddle in the actual like calling card, which I think is just because like, you know, the symbols and stuff inside might actually tell like, you know, a thing. There's probably nothing like on the backside whatsoever about like, you know, uh, tail or whatever it's there so it's probably just like you know the symbolism of the uh, calling card itself that kind of is the riddle itself after that we get to see you know like Beppo, Sachi and then Penguin from Law's Crew pretty much beaten to a pulp like I'm saying like these guys look like they just went through like like the worst possible treatment they could have gone through and it does tell me that this is probably gonna be one of the many moments we're going to see in this arc where Law is just going to have like, you know, his badass moments. Like he's going to come in there, do what he needs to do to wipe the floor with Fukuro Kujo, the Maru Chia looking guy that was with them. And then, you know, the uh, calling guy that was like, you know, there on the side, you know, telling people, you know, from the outside, like to look at these prisoners and stuff. These are the people that if you do anything against Orochi and Kaido, you're going to be locked up in here. So it's a really good thing that Oda has done this as well, because now that you have something where Law is going to come into play and try and, you know, reacquire basically, you know, Sachi, Penguin, Beppo and stuff back from you know the prisoners so they could do this as well where because we have all these prisoners that are there that are other rebels that are part of you know the cause that want to see this rebellion go down and the people that are on the outside they could use that to try and gain all those people afterwards to come on their side once they take you know they take care of business against you know Fukuro Kujo and those guys but the only thing I could see that could come into play that stops Law from doing anything is if say Basil Hawkins or Drake or some of the other headliners come into play then it's like, okay, he has to fight through those guys to try and get them out. But I think the most logical situation is that he uses room, takes everybody else out afterwards, and they have no idea what's going on. So that's what I can see transpiring with Law. He ends up making his way actually there, and we have to see a masterclass performance from him. And the rest of the chapter we get to see afterwards, you know, the stuff that takes place in Udon Prison, where we get to see Luffy and Ogoro, the tag team of the century, going at it against Alpaca Man, aka Cusco from the Emperor's New Groove, and a brand new gifter that was showcased named Mandelo Man, who is in fact a armadillo smile user now again for people who know i actually like armadillos if you guys ever played the tie that has me in tiger games i think there's a character there who had like the armadillo thing going on like the theme and they're really cool they're cool animals but mandalo man let me just say this right now Mom, this guy was looking like you know dollar store bruiser brody if you ever known what that guy looks like and then like it's just the design and stuff was just so weird like he he looks like he has a baby coming out of his back like do you understand like how weird like his design just looks so like i, I just can't you know what i mean like it, he got guns i understand but it's like yo like the design he did and like you know we even get to see too like kawamatsu you know talking about like you know he wants to go out there and start sumo wrestling which kind of gives us an idea of what his fighting style is gonna be like uh, you know, again, I would like to see a little bit more pro wrestling uh, being, you know, integrated somehow into this. You know, we get a pilot driver. If I get to see a German suplex, I'll be happy. But I'm also kind of worried too in regards to Queen's, you know, reaction or how he's kind of handling things right now. Because he just seems too tame. Like, he just seems so calm and like not caring whatsoever what's going on. And it makes me kind of worry considering the fact that what we know later in the chapter with, you know, the advanced arm and hockey stuff is that he just knows that it's not going to work on him. And then maybe that there's going to be something else to come and play that uh, Luffy's going to need to try and beat him until, you know, we see Big Mom show up at Udon Prison and provides distraction for everyone else to escape. Kind of going back into, you know, the events Arm and Hockey stuff. Good to see Luffy, first and foremost, and I thought this was really cool. The fact that he was using uh, his future sights to pretty much help out Hyogoro, try and, like, you know, get away from, like, Alpaca Man, you know, go to the right, go to the left, jump. <laughs> Hear that? My man came out here with the Shibata headbutt. So shout out to Hill Girl before uh, the greatness that came in afterwards. Because, you know, you did it what you need to do. And, you know, he has to talk about with Luffy afterwards in regards to what he exactly is trying to do. And he's talking about, like, you know, what Luffy was trying to do with Armadillo Man. Where he's trying to, like, punch him. 
And he was trying to do like the whole shockwave thing that we saw from Rayleigh and from Sentamaru. But he was only able to manage, you know, to have like his arm turn black and stuff instead of doing the wave when he caught on to him. And I felt like this was really cool that, and I didn't notice this until I went back to look at the chapter again. Look at some of the older stuff as well, which I was mentioning earlier in the, uh, the video. But the very fact that this is stuff, in regards to, you know, you can transfer your hockey into like your sword and stuff, which, you know, is basically like the shockwave stuff, but like a little different thing. It's kind of similar to what, you know, we saw from way back in Alabasta with Koshiro showing, you know, Zoro how to cut steel. He was saying this as well with uh, Hyogoro, where Hyogoro was like, you know, I can show you exactly how to, you know, if you were to transfer uh, your hockey into your sword, you can be able to actually cut steel. And if you didn't want to do that, you don't have to cut the thinnest of papers and stuff. So I thought that was really cool that we actually got to see that brought back into, you know, the current timeline, like stuff that was from back then in a flashback is actually being of use now. And when Hero Girl was looking at what exactly Luffy was trying to do, he's like, yo, let me show you what exactly it is that you're trying to learn. So he comes in, and my man with the shock wave, bro, he was, he was like, yo, that face, he's like, yo, out here, he hits him. And Alpaca Man's down for the count. And then after, you know, he kind of goes with the stance, looking back at Luffy, he's like, you know, is this the thing that you were talking about that you want me to show off and uh, learn? And uh, Luffy's like, yo, we out here, I'm about it. Yo, show me what I need to learn. So I like the fact that, you know, instead of having to rely on the flashbacks, you know, like from Rayleigh and stuff that we kind of saw during the Katakuri fight, Luffy's actually going to be learning how to utilize this in the present timeline. So I feel like that's really good as well. And not to mention the little thing in the chapter as well where Luffy says, if I'm able to learn this, I may be able to bypass Kaido scales. It makes me wonder is that because, you know, with Big Mom, we know that, again, her iron balloon body is probably based on the fact that her hockey is that OD. But it also says to me as well that the dragon scales are just that durable and like, to be able to bypass that, like, you know, Luffy's gonna need to learn this shockwave form of advanced arm and hockey. So, curious to know how that training session is gonna go. I feel like very soon Queen's probably gonna come into the mix and say, okay, I'm not playing around. I'm tired of letting you, you know, wrestle around with my gifters and making a mockery out of them. So, I'm really hoping to see, like, you know, next chapter, Queen's gonna try and intervene, get a fight going on with Luffy, and then maybe it leads to Big Mom popping up afterwards and kind of intervening. If not, then I maybe can see Luffy try and pull, like, you know, a victory against the uh, Queen. But I'm curious to know what you guys think down in the comment section below in regards to this week's chapter of One Piece. Let me know what you guys think about the whole thing in regards, you know, like, uh, the Kawamatsu. Do you think that he is, you know, the Kappa being, like, a subspecies? Uh, the fishmen or do you think that the kappa are going to be like its own race let me know what you guys think down in the comments on that uh in regards to the whole stuff in the risatsu prison district let me know if you guys think that you know law is going to intervene there you know maybe he's going to use his room to try and get everybody out or he has to fight some of the headliners let me know how you think that's going to work out and then the whole advanced arm in hockey did you guys like that uh this you know talk and stuff that we got you know regards to uh how the whole process works that kind of thing let me know down in the comments and uh, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And again, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure to share the video as well so people can hear my thoughts in regards to this week's chapter of One Piece. I will try to get a discussion video out, maybe similar to this kind of style or like an edited style for another thing that I wanted to talk about, which I'm glad Oda didn't talk about here that I can actually bring up and uh, might actually be of uh, use for the Alliance later on down in the arc. So until next time, guys, we'll catch you guys for the discussion itself next week. And if not, I'll catch you guys for chapter 940 of One Piece. So... Commodore last signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care.